So good afternoon. I'm here to present FlexTiles, uh, give a, a project overview. FlexTiles is a European project, an FP7 project, and funded by uh, the European Commission. Uh, if we jump right in with uh, some examples of applications uh, which we're targeting with FlexTiles, uh, first example is a cognitive radio. Uh, we're looking at uh, providing radio service uh, in an environment which may have uh, jammers or obfuscated communications. And so we want the application to adapt uh, automatically uh, to a frequency or a protocol uh, which is available in a set environment. A second example is a smart camera. Uh, where, we, where we want uh, the camera to have some uh, uh, local processing uh, to uh, s start sending data only when there's a, uh, an item of interest which is uh, detected by the camera. Uh, it can be used, for instance, uh, on freeways, as the picture shows, uh, where we would want to follow cars or detect uh, traffic jams or accidents. Uh, it can also be used uh, in an airport uh, where we, uh, we want to use it, follow people to detect uh, abandoned luggage or uh, abnormal behavior in general. If we take the, the first example of the freeway and we look an, at another uh, situation, um, we, we f see that uh, in certain cases there may be more uh, uh, items of interest for a given application and uh, uh, that introduces a new requirement uh, for flex tiles as well, is that um, at one point we want the application to adapt automatically uh, its processing to the number of detections that it has or to, more generally speaking to events, to the number of events or items of interest in a specific set of data that it's processing. If we take a look at the uh, embedded real-time uh, market today, what solutions are available and how FlexTiles fits inside those solutions, uh, we're looking at, uh, we're targeting low power consumption, uh, a low power consumption solution. Um, the numbers which are given by Thales is uh, for power consumption in the range of 10 to 40 watts. Um, uh, obviously, there exist other solutions on the market today. Some are products which are uh, uh, specifically designed for one given application, uh, which will have a power consumption which is much lower because it's been, it's been optimized for that application, but then the chip is uh, uh, less adaptable. Or we have solutions uh, which, uh, which uh, include all-purpose or general-purpose processors uh, b which are much less optimized for a given application, but then they are also uh, much less optimized in power consumption. <clears throat> um, a second re requirement, which, uh, which is re specific to the, the applications we're targeting, is that we're looking at low volume productions. Uh, we're talking about on the order of uh, 1,000 pieces per year. Uh, this means that uh, developing uh, an ASIC application specific uh, uh, for one given application is not commercially viable usually. So we'd like to be able, able to find a solution which is reusable uh, for multiple applications. And the third requirement is that uh, the, the solution needs to last, needs to have a long lifetime uh, on the order of 20 years uh, without any maintenance or if there is some maintenance we want hardware upgrade or retrofit to be as cheap as possible, and possibly the environment, uh, the, the solution to, have to include a programmable device uh, rather than having to modify, to change, a, replace a, a device. So these are the requirements which come from Thales um, uh, for, for this project. The solution that we propose is called FlexTiles. It's a re heterogeneous, reconfigurable many-core. Many and I'm going to explain what each of these three terms uh, means. Uh, by many core, first of all, uh, we are trying to optimize the processing power, the processing performance per watt uh, which is consumed by the, the hardware. Um, so uh, typically uh, uh, the solution uh, to optimize processing performance is to replace one large core by several smaller cores. And if we have enough of these smaller cores, we talk about a many core solution. Uh, so that's what we're targeting with FlexTiles. 
heterogeneous, uh, we say that uh, there is no one solution, one flavor, uh, one type of person, one type of building or, or, or other, which is ideally suited for all situations. Uh, in our case, we're talking about processors, so uh, we want a heterogeneous uh, uh, group of processing elements. Uh, we have three groups of processing ele elements. There are general purpose processors, which we call GPPs for short, digital signal processors, and FPGA. And they each have their advantages and their inconvenience. And by having a, a group of uh, uh, by having some of each type of these processing elements in FlexTiles, uh, we provide a better solution. Now for reconfigurability, what do we mean by reconfigurability? Uh, if we take a, tra a traditional uh, way of solving uh, processing uh, and by hardware, uh, the typical approach is, well, we put, we put as much hardware as needed to, to perform the hardest case of processing uh, which can occur uh, uh, for a given application. Well, in some cases, the hardest case is unknown, it's not defined, or the hardest case is simply too costly, whether it be in volume or in weight or in energy or in dollars. Uh, and that's where we introduce reconfigurability, where uh, just like in a, in a Lego set, uh, we have uh, uh, a certain amount of hardware resources and we want to plug and unplug software parts of the software uh, application running on that hardware uh, dynamically uh, at runtime uh, so as to only run those parts which are uh, necessary and, and run those parts which are best suited for a given uh, environment or a given time uh, 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 depending on the data that we're processing. So this is the, uh, an image of the FlexTiles architecture that we're using. Uh, it has GPPs, it has DSP nodes, it has uh, EFPGA accelerators, uh, DSP and EFPGA accelerators. It, it has a network on chip connecting all of these uh, uh, processing elements together, and it has generic interfaces uh, b uh, doing the interface between all of these elements uh, so that they're easily replaceable one by uh, another, by, by other types of uh, either GPPs or DSPs or, or uh, and so on. Another th uh, point which is specific about the FlexTiles architecture is that uh, it is a 3D uh, stacked uh, architecture. So we have the GPPs and DSP, we have two dies. The GPPs and DSPs are, con are all located on the bottom die. The top die uh, uh, integrates all of the EFPGA and we have a network on chip uh, which is connecting all of the GPPs, DSPs to one another and then going up to the EFPGA layer uh, to connect uh, the accelerators in the EFPGA to the other processors. So one of the points that we looked at in the FlexTiles project was how to best uh, uh, optimize this 3D stacking uh, strategy. We, there are different ways that we can stack uh, two dies. Uh, depending on how we flip it, each of the two, the two dies. Uh, we did the calculation with uh, the sizes of different blocks that we were going to integrate, the sizes of pads for bumps and micro bumps between the dies, uh, and the sizes of TSVs to, to go through the, 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 the thickness of, the, uh, of a die uh, for, connect, for, for, wire, for wiring. And uh, the solution ended up with the face-to-face being the optimal uh, solution, and that's what the one which uh, we adopted for FlexTiles. Now if we take a look at the embedded FPGA uh, layer, uh, so the top layer uh, on, this, uh, on this slide, um, at one point we can instantiate, we can launch tasks on that EFPGA layer. Uh, in this example we have two tasks which are starting, uh, then at one point we can add or replicate uh, add a task or replicate a task, then the tasks can be moved around on the EFPGA to make room for additional tasks uh, and so on. And uh, you'll have a presentation of the embedded FPGA uh, later on. Um, if we, one of the, well, uh, 
Flextile has uh, many advantages uh, for its self-adaptive uh, properties. Uh, first of all, it increases energy efficiency in the fact that t uh, specific tasks can be mapped to the processing element which <coughs> best uh, performs uh, that specific task, whether it be GPP, DSP, or EFPGA. Um, it, the the self-adaptiveness can also be used to move tasks away from hotspots uh, on the on the dies. Uh, we can replicate tasks and compare the results to identify faults or errors. And uh, when a fault or an error is detected, uh, we can move tasks away from faulty uh, processing elements uh, so as to continue having a functional uh, uh, array of pro uh, processors. Now the question which, uh, which comes is, well, how do we efficiently map uh, complex applications to a heterogeneous many-core architecture? Um, have we bitten off, bitten off too much to chew? Uh, and uh, especially in an environment with a limited budget, uh, whether it be a power budget or performance or uh, just engineer, engineering resources for programming that application, and the answer, obviously, is no, we have a solution for that. Uh, Flextiles uh, comes also with uh, software. It comes with a, a tool chain, uh, which I'll be presenting now, quickly. So the model of computation uh, for the Flextiles software uh, is based on a cyclostatic data flow uh, model. Uh, basically, what it means is that you take your application, you break it down into actors or tasks, uh, each task uh, consumes a, a, a certain amount, a fixed amount of data uh, and produces a fixed amount of data at each iteration. And uh, tasks can be swapped in, swapped out of the running environment depending on events and conditions which occur. So we have a, qu a short uh, animation to show you. So in this example, uh, if you take the group, well, we have a certain amount of tasks which are mapped on, on the hardware. If you take the, the, the tasks in group five, uh, at one point, say, we, we need more processing, more throughput for those specific tasks, so we can replicate those tasks. Uh, then in group one, an event occurs and uh, we, want, uh, we have to change the task which is running, so we change from one task to another task or group of tasks. Then an, ev an event occurs in group four, where we want to replace one task by another set of tasks. Uh, but that tasks, those, these new tasks require more hardware resources, so we can free up uh, the, remove the replicated tasks, uh, so that the the new group, of, the, the new task in group four, has enough processing resources, and so on. Uh, so basically, that gives you an idea that tasks can be swapped in, swapped out. Uh, and uh, so as to always have the optimal uh, hardware solution for the software which has to be run. As I mentioned, we provide a tool chain for the developer to uh, compile his code onto the, the platform. Um, that, that starts with a C application at the top. Uh, then uh, we have a tool which uh, graphically allows the, the um, helps the, the the programmer to parallelize his code, and that will be showed uh, later in a, in a following uh, presentation. Um, the, that tool, that graphical tool, uses a representation of the architecture. That means a, 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 an indication as to how much re hardware resources are available on the flex tiles and what type of resources are available on the flex tiles. And then we have a streaming optimization, which uh, produces C code, which is going to be uh, which can be compiled either on a GPP node or on a, DC or on a DSP node, or which can be uh, mapped onto an embedded FPGA with a C to VHDL uh, type of tool, uh, or uh, it can be so it can be one or more of, of the uh, of all, or maybe even all three, uh, which are going to provide binary, which is going to be bundled then into a, an image to be executed on the FlexTiles platform. That's, that's for the question of how do we compile the, the application. 
Now we need to verify that application. There are two tools which, are, which we provide for that. There's a simulator and there's an emulator. The simulator is based on OVP. Um, it uses a simplified, uh, it uses simplified models of the processing elements and the FlexTiles platform in general. And it is used to simulate the parallelism uh, of uh, the application. And then we have a FlexTiles development board, which is based on two FPGAs. It actually integrates the exact model of all the processing elements. It's much faster and it's cycle accurate compared to the OVP, which was not. So to summarize, FlexTiles is a complete platform uh, starting from the bottom with the hardware architecture that we provide. Uh, on top of that, we have the software with the kernels, resource managers, virtualization managers, which will be explained later on in the presentations. We have the tool chain, which I just showed. I'd like to just show one slide with a list of all the, the partners which uh, participated in, in this project. And the very last slide is FlexTiles 2. We are currently working on setting up uh, a follow-up project, call, project called FlexTiles 2. Um, the, f the aim of this project is to integrate a FlexTiles into silicon. Uh, the first question that, that came to mind to us, to the group, was, well, what size FlexTiles do we want to integrate? How many processing elements do we want to use? Um, and the solution that we've adopted is to uh, have a modular approach where we use we uh, produce chiplets all the same size the same amount of processing elements and uh, we integrate those chiplets we integrate more or less of these chiplets on an interposer uh, for different types of applications if there are any questions I'll take them now uh, otherwise uh, if you have an application to run on FlexTiles, please don't hesitate to contact us. Today is the last day of the FlexTiles project, but we will continue uh, answering emails uh, uh, on our FlexTiles website for the coming years, months, months, years at least, a couple years at least. Thank you.